Good afternoon. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me for this talk today, where we'll be discussing the burnout cycle and how many of us in the design industry, no matter what discipline we practice within, uh, can often find ourselves st stuck on repeat. My name is Chris Hartley. Um, I'm currently a UX designer at SEP, which is a software and product design and development company up in Carmel. Uh, prior to joining SEP about a year ago, I co-owned and led design at a specialty agency uh, in Fountain Square. In addition to being a designer, I'm also a photographer. And I, in, in that realm, I specialize in headshots and brand photography. And in the last year in particular, I've had a lot of time at home to be able to also take lots and lots of pictures of my dog, Peter. I'm based here in Indianapolis and it, um, more specifically in the Meridian Kessler neighborhood. Um, and before we get too deep into this, I think it's important to frame this conversation a little bit. Burnout looks different for everyone. There are different triggers and it manifests outwardly um, differently for everyone. This is also a huge topic to cover in just the few minutes that we have together today. So we will be staying um, more high level and, and um, still, still be, being able to identify ways that we can break that burnout cycle. If I could see your faces or if we were in person, I would ask you to raise your hand if you've experienced burnout recently. If you're comfortable enough, um, feel free to drop that answer in the chat. After all, we're, 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 we're living through a pandemic right now. So not only have we, as designers, again, no matter what discipline we practice within, the work that we make is inherently emotional, whether it's the emotion we put into the work or the emotion that we're trying to evoke from the result. When you add that in itself with, with burnout in a pandemic, those burnout triggers that you may have been accustomed to in the past have been, have been amplified exponentially. And I think it's important quickly here to, to pause and acknowledge that this last year has been has been uh, tough, and and tough is a huge understatement, right? Like we've we're, we're living through a pandemic as creatives who are generally fulfilled by by making things and personal connections. So I ask this: How, how do we break the burnout cycle and approach life to be a more sustainable practice. I think it's first important that we define success. And this isn't a black and white answer. This is a different answer for each person in your own life. In the last few years, as different social media platforms have exploded, there has been a, a movement come along that promotes constantly working and, and never taking any breaks. And, and if you do take those breaks, they promote that, that, that you don't, um, maybe you won't be as successful. And what I'm describing here is that hustle culture. And it, it, in itself, the hustle culture is toxic and unhealthy for, for many of us, especially because they, they do promote that constantly being active and creating. Everything that we do has a cost. So no matter how much we do and, and the more and more that we do create without taking the time to rest and replenish ourselves, that is often at the cost of our, of our own mental health. And I think we need to talk way more about it. Out, outside of the concept of burnout, but just in general in our industry, we need to talk more about the mental health um, implications of, of our industry. In April of 2014, I joined a specialty marketing agency um, that was primarily 
focus on growth consulting for some of the largest accounting firms in the, the country. And within that first 18 months, I had the opportunity to lead them through a transition that included a, a new name, a new brand, a renewed vision, and all of the things that come along with that. A little, little did I know at the time, but six months later, I would have the opportunity to purchase 50% of the business. So not only was I leading design, but then I was also spearheading many of the, the business operations. And over those first few months and into that first year, I started to notice that my identity became one with the business. So when the business was succeeding, I felt like I was doing great. And, and the inverse is also true. What I found in those first few months is, is longer hours, working seven days a week, constantly telling myself that I would take a break in a little bit. Telling myself that over and over again, those first few months into that first year, and I can honestly tell you, I didn't do it. And because I didn't do it, I have found myself now accompanied with anxiety with regular panic attacks, sleepless nights, and swift mood swings that were, that, that I was not a pleasant person to be around most of the time. And throughout all of this, I thought that I was thriving because the business was, and that, that this was just part of the hustle and it would eventually calm down and, and, and level out. And I can tell you that that, that didn't happen. So looking back, there were signs every single time of, of burnout. And it wasn't until I was out, I was beyond that stage of burnout that I could see that, that there were these signs. So, so I ask, how, how do we break this burnout cycle that, that, that many of us experience? I think it's, it's first important that we recognize it, that we recognize that there's something going on and that we, we, we recognize and, and give space for that um, feeling of burnout to exist. That may manifest itself in different ways for each of us in our lives. For, for example, it may be, it may seem that every day is a bad day. It may seem that there's a, an incredible lack of motivation. And I'm not talking about procrastination on projects. I'm talking about a lack of motivation at its core where it's difficult to get out of bed in the morning. Maybe you're overworked or underappreciated at your job. Or maybe you feel like nothing that you do makes a difference. With all of these things in mind, and when you begin to, to recognize that, that, that something is going on in your life, that then you're able to make the space for you to, to reset and you're able to make the space for you to listen to what's going on around you and listen more to your body. Is your body trying to tell you something? Maybe you're overcommitted in your life and maybe you're starting to discover what life has in store for you next. And maybe that, that's completely different than the work that you're doing now, and that's okay. When you look at ways to, to reset, I think one of the most important and maybe one of the more difficult is to, to rest. In a society that, that, general, that generally de-emphasizes rest, it's crucial that we make that time and make that space to do so. Maybe force yourself to try new things that are completely unrelated to the work that you do every day or your, your everyday routine. Try to get some, some fresh air. And when you're able to recognize what's going on and you're able to reset, that's, that's the point that, 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 you're able to become, that you're able to become resilient. This is not only, you know, 
not only the ability to that to to interrupt the burnout cycle and divert it elsewhere, but you're also then able to have those hard conversations. Maybe your burnout is related to the work that you do, and maybe if you're feeling this way, that, that you it, it may be appropriate for you to have a conversation with your team or with your manager and and truly explain what's going on. Having that type of conversation allows you to not only take care of yourself, but it also allows you to show up better for your team every day. I'm confident when you, when you keep these things in mind that you can break the burnout cycle. And once you're able to, to recognize what burnout looks like in your own life, you can start to see it in other people as well. And as we're all in this together, going along th this daily journey, it's important for us to look out for one another. And even when it feels like it's the most difficult thing to do, it will all be okay in the end. And when you're walking through this journey in life and, and maybe you're feeling burnt out right now, maybe you, you want a change and, and you're not sure where to start or where to go. No, I believe in you. And I believe that the people in your circle believe in you. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen today. I will be over on the Q&A stage here in a couple of minutes if you'd like to continue that conversation.